Hey guys! So we just finished coding and we used pulse width modulation. Or PWM. Yep. <laughs> so what's pulse width modulation all about, Catherine? Oh, it's basically it's where you can control the brightness of the LED by controlling like the duty cycle. What's the duty cycle? It's how long the LED is on. If it's on half the time, it's not as bright if, as when it's on the whole time. All right, so you, you have a certain number of volts that you need to run the LED, mm -hmm. so you can't just have it at a smaller voltage. You have to have it on less of the time. Is that what you're saying? Basically, yeah. <laughs> All right, so the AVR chips that are in the Arduinos support pulse width modulation and here's a little picture this is from the arduino site showing you zero percent duty cycle so it's on never 25 percent it's on a quarter of the time half the time three quarters and all the time so if we use pwm signals then we can adjust the brightness of our leds should we have a look at the code? Yep. <laughs> All right, so here's our program. It's pretty simple. We start by including a few things. Some of these we probably really didn't need. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a little bit of some comments. We have six groups that we're gonna use for our fading because we have six PWM channels. Now we use an AT Mega 328. And the reason that we use that is just because we had some. You could use a smaller chip, unless you're like us, and you just have a lot of these chips laying around. Yep. <laughs> and here's the pinout. So there's not a lot of connections. We've got plus 5 volts on pin 7, ground on pin 8, and the rest of the connections are these different channels. So we have pins 5, 11, 12, and 15 through 17. Those are going to connect to our different channels. Here's our program itself. We start out, we define an array, and that array has our values, our starting values for our different channels. So half of them are fully on and half of them are all the way off. And then we have increments that we're going to change our brightness by, and they alternate between positive and negative. And then we have maximum values for each channel. Now it ended up because of the mode that we used that the maximum is 255 or hex FF for all of these. We made a simple little function called set values. All it does is it will set each of these outputs OCR 0A, 0B, 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B to whatever is stored in that array. Here's our main method. We define an unsigned character, i. That's basically an integer that's unsigned and it's only one byte long. Then we set up our ports. So we have to set everything as output. So we have port D and we have pin D6 that's an output, D5 that's an output, and D3 that's an output. For port B we set b1 b2 and b3s as outputs then we tell each of our timers that we're going to use so there's three timers and each timer has two pulse width channels we tell it set this to non-inverted mode it's kind of the standard and that's what we're doing here so we're saying non-inverted mode for a1, B1, etc. We tell it we want fast PWM mode. There are a couple of modes you can pick from, and this one's just fine. Now, this one here, timer one, there's a little note that says this is fast 8 bit mode. Timer zero and timer two are 8 bit timers, but timer one is a 16 bit timer. So we could count up to higher values than 255. But to keep it simple, we just said, all right, let's make that one also count to 255. 
and pretend like it's 8-bit. We set the initial values. We set the prescalers. That's how much the clock gets divided when it gets sent to the timers. And by setting the prescalers, it also turns on the timers. So that starts the PWM channels from doing stuff. Then we have this infinite loop. We loop through each of our channels. We look at each value and we add whatever's an increment for that value to it. We check and we say, is that value now less than zero? If it is, we set it to zero and then we change the direction of the increment by multiplying by minus one. We do the same thing with the maximum. We check and see if we've exceeded the max. If we did, we set the value equal to the max and we reverse the direction. Then we call set values to update the values, the brightness of our LEDs. We delay 10 milliseconds and then we do it all over again. And we do that forever. And that's it. That's all that there is to the simple program. So in order to build this program, we have a, a make file just like we did before. So let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. Pretty basic. Our source file is main. Our chip type is ATmega328. We're going to use the internal 8 megahertz oscillator. We're going to use a USB tiny. That's our programmer type. We're going to use this little board. We've used this in some past videos. So it's a USB tiny from Adafruit. Here are our C program flags, and here's a little help screen that tells you what it can do. You can clean. That says, I'm going to delete the files. You can flash it to the chip. You can display this. You can create the files that could be written to the chip. You can program the chip, and you can also burn the fuses. So this make file is very similar to the other ones we've had in the past. So if I want to get the hex, I just build my program using this command. And if I want to flash it, I use AVR dude. We've used that before. So let me go ahead and build this. So I'm going to go ahead and run make hex and that's done. Built my program. If I want to program a chip, I can easily do that. So we're going to grab a random chip. We have a few. Yeah, we only have a few. Totally not like... We're not hoarding these or anything. Yeah. So I've grabbed my chip. Now, remember we said before there's a little trick you can do. If you look at the chip... Wait, are we using that webcam okay, or that Okay, we're webcam? using this webcam. That's why it didn't work. You'll notice that these pins are bent out slightly. So what you can do is just take it and roll it on a tabletop to make them exactly perpendicular. And that'll make it easier to plug in. I'll plug, plug it into it my in. board. Pop, pop, pop. Plug it in. All right, so that's plugged in. Plug in the board. And now I'll just run make flash. <gasps> and that's it. It's done. Yay! Why is the computer doing that? Okay, so that's pretty much that. So once you've gotten it flashed, then you can look at testing it out. And once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and solder it up. So now we just soldered our amazing lock, which is pretty simple. We just soldered all these wires to this board. We soldered the battery pack to this board. So how are you powering this chip, Captain? With this. 9 volt battery. And how are you getting 5 volts from a 9 volt battery? With this thingamajig. Is that a 7805 voltage regulator? Yep. Alright, so what does it look like if you turn that sign around? The stand's optional. And it looks even better in the dark. Okay. So that's our sign. Thank you guys for watching. Daddy and Daughter Electronics. Oh, yeah. This episode of Daddy and Daughter Electronics was sponsored by Windows Forensics by Dr. Phil Polstra. You can buy this book wherever books are sold.
books are sold? Yeah, you can buy it wherever books are sold. And if you don't know anything about Windows or forensics, this is your book.